Hey y'all, N4H and H here with the Yaesu FTDX 5000 MP. Just happens to be the radio that I had turned on, but what I'm going to show you doesn't matter what radio, I mean, any, especially any Yaesu. So, first of all, I want to show you what I did with DSP over here, digital noise reduction. I'm running it higher than I normally would. Let me show you without it. Now you're thinking that's a lot of noise, but it's not really. This is the 10 meter band and I'm running amp two. All right. Normally I would run amp one, but I just wanted to show you. Uh, but you know, you see he's kind of weak. Let's wait till he comes back. Okay, now I'm gonna turn DNR back on. Much easier on the ears, right? Here it is without it. Now I'll tell you what made me turn it up that high is let me uh, let me turn it back off again. Well, actually, let me lower it to what I normally would run in on this band: three, maybe four, possibly five. I'll put it on five. Okay, because now one of the reasons I might run it a little higher here than I would say on 40 meters. Let me just clue you in on that because if you've seen me when I'm down on 40 meters or or lower, I'm usually running the DNR at three or four at the most. And that's because down there I'm running IPO uh, because I don't need a lot of gain on those, that frequency. So that's automatically improving the signal to noise ratio. So I don't need as much help from the, uh, from the digital noise reduction. There's a lot of confusion on that. I even had a question today uh, uh, to clarify some of that. Uh, I covered in a lot of videos. If, if if you're not watching all the videos, you're missing it, and that's probably why you had to ask me a question. But the deal is, lower frequencies, you don't need amp 1 or amp 2 unless you're maybe working CW using a tight filter. Then you may need amp 1 to overcome the insertion loss through a tight roofing filter. But normally I'm going to run IPO. Now, this rig has two levels of IPO, but I'm going to run it on IPO1, which is the equivalent of IPO on an FTDX10, which is sitting right over here to the right. You've seen it many times. And an FTDX101. That would be IPO1 in this rig. This rig also has something called IPO2, which is a direct bypass. Uh, in other words, IPO1 is still a little bit of amplification, not nearly as much as AMP1 or AMP2. It's amplified to the point of basically overcoming the insertion loss of the roofing filter but to the point where it begins to dis it would begin to degrade the signal to noise ratio so it's, it's it goes right up to that edge and then stops so it's it's a maximizing if you will uh, in fact they call it optimizing the intercept point that's why they call it ipo intercept point optimization so it's optimizing the intercept point which is the point where your first if is created from a first oscillator beating against the incoming signal so i would almost always run ipo down on the low bands and even some attenuation if you've seen my videos you know my formula 6 db usually of attenuation after ipo always engage ipo first and then on 40 meters i'll usually use 6 db of attenuation 60 meters as well 80, I'll usually go to 12, and then 160, I'll go to 18 dB. But on these upper bands like this, unless I'm talking to somebody who's S9 or above, I'm usually going to have to run amp 1. And uh, he was getting so weak, I went ahead and ran amp 2. All right, but let me show you one of the reasons I ended up running the DNR up so high. Switching antennas. Right now, that's on an off-center fed dipole, up at about 50, 52 feet. Now I'm over on the vertical. Listen to the noise level difference. Let me turn it up a little bit. Off center fed dipole. Vertical. So the vertical just naturally draws in a little bit more uh, atmospheric noise, natural noise, as in QRN, N for natural. And when I did, a lot of that noise joined his audio and made it less easy to pull him out. So that's why I ran the digital noise reduction up to 10. All right, just wanted to give you a quick uh, lesson there in 
my thinking regarding a digital noise reduction, IPO attenuation, I, you know, I wouldn't need attenuation on a high frequency like this. I mean, we're on a 10 meter band here and I would not normally run DNR so high. Let me go back to that vertical. See, I put it on 10. Now watch that. Pay attention real close there. That's the vertical with digital noise reduction at 10 to try to knock down that QRN so I could still pull him out. So as he's quit talking, that's a shame, but now I'm gonna go back to five and go to the off-center fed dipole. You see, five on the horizontal antenna is about equal to 10 using algorithm, algorithm 10. Remember these are algorithms. The higher the number, the more aggressive they are at separating noise from voice information in this case. So because of the QRN that's increased on the vertical, I ran the DNR up to 10. It really didn't hurt how he sounded. I wish he was still in there, uh, but you heard him there at the beginning. That's the, the trick. Uh, when you, any of you who use a vertical antenna, you're gonna pull in more natural noise. And so it's a good idea to, you know, to be, be aware, I should say, that you may need a little bit higher setting on the digital noise reduction. Again, this is up on the high bands because you're needing, you're needing more amplification, which is also bringing in more of that natural noise. On the low bands, I'll, I'll, since I'm saying that, let me give you a point of reference here. I'm gonna to switch to 40 meters. And notice the, the noise level's pretty low. Wait, well, why, Doug? <laughs> well, look at this, all right. That's amp one. Look at that. S5 to S7 of noise bouncing around. You know, that's, the point is, why amplify noise? I'm gonna to go to IPO1, which is the equivalent of IPO on an FTDX10 or a 101. See, I've still got S1 bouncing up to four of noise, but that's much better. And I could, in that case, kick in 6 dB of attenuation, and that would be how I would do it on an FTDX10. Now, see, compare that to what it was like over there on 10 meters. But see, digital noise reduction over here. Let me zoom in. DNR on here, see, is at three. And that's pretty typical for me on 40 meters. All right. Now, the 5000 has that second IPO level, so I'm going to go to it, and then I'll turn the attenuator back off. Just press straight in on the ATT button there for you 5,000 owners that pressing straight in resets. So see now, again, quiet. But Doug, could you hear anybody? Only gets about 20, 25 watts reflected. So, uh, anyway, yeah. I just, man, I really thought we might have you a little You know what I'm always saying. Bands, Don't uh, worry about the S meter. I've not, uh, made any contacts uh, today. I worked so, it to uh, the CPU left. Has Try to fuse and now he's like a phone call. Mostly okay, now I'll turn the amp back on. Station on 12, but I think he was going and the signal's going to come back up because the S meter is calibrated like using on amp 15, 1 and on 20 meters, by the way. And, and then uh, when I went down to 20, I mean, there was a lot of his words either, uh, but definitely more. So, uh, yeah, I guess the that noise creeping in. Now, watch this. It's like a phone call. Okay, well, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. And again, what I just showed you, other than the IPO2 part, uh, can be done on just about any radio out there with a decent digital noise reduction. And definitely, Yesus have really, really good noise reduction, uh, digital noise reduction, especially on the FTDX10, the FTDX5000, and the FTDX101 after the uh, uh, update last year, last August, I believe. So again, one other thing, just to remind you, if you don't have a 5000, you're gonna have regular IPO, and that's the equivalent of regular IPO on this rig. So then what you wanna do is kick in 6 dB of attenuation, and that would be similar to me running IPO2 and no attenuation. Okay. Now, I'll throw this bonus in there. I've written this in in descriptions, and people still ask me this. 
So apparently not very many people read the video descriptions. I usually put more info in there, not always, but sometimes I put more info then in there than I do the video because I'm trying to keep the videos under 15 minutes. Uh, so I encourage you to read the descriptions. And in those descriptions, I've got things such as uh, you'll run across where I explain how I give a signal report. I don't go by the meter. I might look at the meter, but I, I give my signal report based on how they sound. And I've got my, uh, my S7, S3, S5, S7, what did I say, S7, S1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. I've got my chart in there of how I determine a signal report. Uh, that's in some of the videos uh, related to, say, signal to noise ratio, things like that. But here's, I'm going to give it to you real quick here. If you're running an FTDX10 or a 101 or something like that, you're going to be on IPO. 40 meters, 6 dB of attenuation. Now watch this. I'm going to switch to 80. Now, if I, I'm running IPO2, but if I was going to run IPO1, then I'm going to go to 12 dB of attenuation on 80. Now I'll go to 160. Again, I'm running IPO2 because, because this radio has that, but if I was running IPO1, I would then go to 18 dB of attenuation. So if you're on FTDX10, IPO and 18 dB for 160, uh, IPO and 12 dB for 80, and IPO and 6 dB for 40 meters. Again, when you've got a radio that does not have the IPO2. So that would just be called regular IPO on uh, something like an FTDX10 or a, uh, an FTDX101. And for that matter, the 710, it has, a, it has an IPO. It's a little bit different how it works, but it's a similar effect and you can follow the same rule. IPO and six, IPO and 12, IPO and 18. That's an FT710. They do call it IPO, but it works differently than it does in the uh, in the Superhet receivers, like the front end of an FTDX10 or the front end of an FTDX101. It, it, you know, it uses something called dithering. It's a little bit different. It's handled in the SDR stage. All right. Well, I hope again that you found the video helpful and informative. Please hang around for another half a minute or so. I want to acknowledge five of the members of the Patreon team who support this channel. Without them, you wouldn't have seen this video. That's how important they are. And so they're important to me, they're important to you because you wouldn't have seen the video without them. And these are members that I call long haulers because they have invested a year or two or three, and I've got some at three and a half mark now, making sure this channel stays up and running so I can bring you this type of content. So if you like this type of content, consider joining the Patreon team and again, please stand by while I recognize five of those Patreon team long haulers. Thank you. 73 from N4H&H.